Educational Film Division presents a documentary on film grain. The Electric Eel, seafood restaurant and gay bar, open seven days a week for your convenience. I'd like you to meet a friend of mine. He's in my pants. His name is Linnaeus. Hubba, hubba, take it all off there, sexy. Electrophorus electricus, Linnaeus. Here at the lab, we just call him Joe. Or Comrade Stalin, for short. Isn't exactly what you'd call a raving beauty, is it? Well, those in glass houses. Point. For one thing, he's quite a swimmer. Notice the wave motion of the long ventral fin. More eel porn the than the mind can stand. The, the eel is propelled forward. Reversed, the waves travel toward the head. How about ascending and descending? How about I do a strip tease ascending, for the audience? The starts waves at the center, which go both ways. And to descend, the waves start at both ends and work toward the middle. Joe is commonly called an electric eel. But actually, it isn't an eel at all. But it's a Scientologist. Of the carp or catfish family. Now, the eel part of his name may not be correct, but he sure came by the electric part honestly. He does the good Lord's work. There are stories of cattle, horses, even human beings being killed by the electric shock of eels just like this. And you want to save in them, fact, why? In the Amazon River, ranchers have lost so many cattle that they have what they call electric eel drives. They herd the eels into shallow water, and then uh, they kill them with their machetes. Borrowed from Danny Tritejo. Oh, yes. They have insulated handles on the machetes. Oh, better save this for chopping up some dead no, hookers later. Electrical impulses can't be seen. But if we put an electrode at each end of the tank... Hope I can get UHF on this thing. We can hear the electrical discharge on a loudspeaker. Stupid 1950s we. Now, those gentle pulses are part of the eel's radar system. In some mysterious way, he uses them to locate his food. He uses them to call Denny's. Now, so far as we know, all adult electric eels are blind. They have heavy cataracts on their eyes. Oh, using too much LASIK. Now, eels feed on small fish. And if it weren't for this radar system, they'd starve to death. Well, maybe that eel should get a now, real job. When he locates a fish or uh, when he is disturbed, he puts out what we call the double whammy. He farts them to death. This is a terrific shock that stuns anything in the water nearby. But not as stunning as me in a corset. The only way you can describe Joe's table manners is to say that they're downright shocking. Ho <laughs> ho what a knee slapper! Oh, I had some Mexican food last night. And a little Indian food, too. Hey, can you get a guy a gas X here? Help, help, save us in the devil worm! Time for a full body cavity search, like Mr. Eel. Is an air breather. It must rise to the surface from time to time for air. And for some wacky tobacco. For this reason, he can be quite comfortable out of water. Or in a deep fryer. Man, these sushi bars just get weirder and weirder. Now, the vital organs of the electric eel are all in the front ten inches of his body. Good. Now let's circumcise him. The rest is pure power plant. And believe it or not, he can generate more than 500 volts. I'll go with not. Here we have a bank of 36 neon lamps. Look at my light bright. Ain't it groovy? We'll connect these to... Uh, my genitals. Our eel electrode. That's code for his genitals. Now, of course, the eel is designed to operate in water. Or in Budweiser. His electrical system doesn't function too well in air. But even under these conditions, he should give us enough power to light the light. That's Morse code for, get me out of this stupid flick! For some reason, people seem to find it difficult to believe that a fish could put out any considerable amount of power. Thanks, creationists. Even some of the folks here at the laboratory and just a little bit skeptical about Joe's electrical prowess. So I'm going to electrocute him. for that reason, we've asked a few of them if they wouldn't help us in an experiment. Will you have the group come in now, please? All right. Okay. You stand right over here, please. Now I'm going to drop a safe on your head. Line up there. Right over here, Mr. Humphrey. That's fine. Now, Dave, if you'll take this 
please, and hold it in your right hand. You hold mine, Piro. Louis, you hold this one. That's fine. Now, everybody join hands. And let's give a big shout-out to Jesus. That's right. Now, you're connected in series. Now, there are five of you. That means that each of you will receive just one-fifth of the total voltage of the eel. I think. Now, relax. We'll give you the low-voltage cap first. You ready? Gosh, he's really <laughs> cute! Did you feel that? Wasn't bad, was it? <laughs> that's not the eel. That's his electric vibrator. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to have you meet a group of confirmed <laughs> believers in electric eels. <laughs> Thank you very much. You better get back to the Mad Men set before you're now, fired. Where did that electricity come from? Strange as it may seem, the eel's electric tissue is made up of cells very much like the cells that make up the nerves of our own bodies. We have cells? These cells are called electroplasts. Damn glove won't come off. Here, a crude model of one of these cells. I'm going to submit it to the science Actually, fair. the electroplast is a tiny battery, one twenty-fifth of an inch thick. But not as thick as my head. Now, in a flashlight, there are three cells. So that's where I hid my suppositories. Each cell generates one and a half volts. Three of them in series produce the four and a half volts necessary for the lamp. Want to go trick-or-treating with me? The eel's battery produces one-tenth of a volt. Ten of them. In series, will produce one volt. And 21 of them will produce a blackjack. Well, at this rate, it would take 5,000 of these to produce the 500 volts of the eel. Well, he's got them, and then some. An eel like Joe here probably has... A tiny wang. 250,000 electric cells. Hey, stop throwing all these big numbers at me. Get them in series, 5,000 of them, and you have the 500 volts. The rest of them are connected in parallel to build up the current capacity. Hey, can you put me back in the tank? You're I boring the shit out of me. Tiny batteries has an electronic switch controlled by a signal sent along the nerve fiber connected to it. So he's like a big TV remote. When an eel wants to shock something, he puts on his dirty lingerie. He throws hundreds of thousands of switches all at once just by thinking about it. I know, I don't believe it either, folks. But what to me is even more amazing is that when Joe's battery is run down, he can recharge them, all of them, in just a thousandth of a second. Wish the same could be said for the audience. That's quite a power plant, isn't it? The eel's electrical system is composed of three main parts. The first is called the large electric organ. Also known as the dingle. This is the source of the eel's main voltage. Now the function of this organ, called the organ of Hunter, is classified. Is still somewhat of a mystery, although scientists believe that in some way it works with the large organ in producing the double whammy. Let me drop my pants and I'll give you the triple whammy. This organ, called the bundle of socks, is to me the most wonderful. It gives me the giggles! It has been definitely identified as the source of those mysterious radar pulses. Better call Mulder and Scully. In other words, this is the power plant for the eel's radar transmitter. Now, of course, the radar system must have a receiver also. As well as a tight end. You notice those pits located in rows along the front part of the eel? That's acne, doofus! Last night, I was in New York City talking with Dr. Christopher Coates, the director of the New York Zoological Society. Later that night, we made sweet Dr. man Coates love. Coates is the world's foremost authority on electric eels. He performed an experiment recently that seems to indicate that those pits are a definite part of the eel's radar receiving system. <coughs> Bullshit. Now, if Joe is willing to cooperate, we can perform a similar experiment here. The problem is to render Joe's radar system temporarily inoperative. Just like my wife's clitoris. Now, if we paint these pits with an insulating liquid... A little bit of butter, and we'll be ready to put you on a sandwich. If these pits have anything to do with the radar apparatus, Joe will find it very difficult to locate a fish. Anybody want to drink the water of life while I'm waiting? Well, we won't go hungry. He'll go on welfare. This is a liquid that will wash off very rapidly. Um, is it safe to put nail polish on an eel? All right, Bill, let's go back into your tent. And now, for my next trick, I'm going to shove this eel up my butt. That's right. Come on out now. Get in there, you freeloading son of a bitch. Well, we want to 
to give him a good supply of fish. And an even better supply of heroin. All right, Joe is surrounded by his favorite delicacy. Regurgitated ox fat. testicles. But for the next few moments, at least, those fish are just as safe as if there weren't an electric eel within a thousand miles. Safer even than a white man in Harlem. Where Joe's radar is on the blink. Goddamn newfangled is, chopsticks. Uh, transmitter's working all right. Quick, Robin, boost his gain. He's still putting out those radar pulses. Actually, that's the sound of Justin Bieber masturbating. Actually, it's his receiver that's not operating. Huh, <laughs> you're telling me. Now, let's think for just a moment about what that means. And by moment, I mean decades. Extent, we can locate objects with our ears. We can tell roughly the direction from which a sound is coming. What? But you know, if I were blindfolded, I'd sure hate to try to catch a greased pig simply by listening to it squeal. Science humor! But, uh... This problem, compared to Joe's, is relatively simple. You see, sound travels 1,100 feet per second. And I'm not just the president of Hair Club for Men. I'm also a client. But Joe's radar pulses travel at the speed of light, 186,000 miles per second. Oh, you just made that up. It means that an electric eel's radar system must be able to interpret time difference that is less than one billionth of a second. I guess it is hip to be square. This is so amazing as to be almost beyond belief. Or even more amazement, watch me do a belly dance. Yes, Joe, you're quite a fellow. You may not win any beauty contests, but you've given us a lot to think about. And even more to forget. You've given us a new understanding of the God who made us all. God does not endorse the claims made in this video.